after having one of the worst three game stretches by an all NBA level player in playoff history, Jimmy Butler responded with an all time great two game stretch even if his team didn't end up winning in the end. I'm a believer in great performances being worth talking about and making videos about even if their teams lose. One of the first film breakdowns I've ever done is about Trey Young in a gaming lost. So I think you guys understand what I'm getting at here. In today's video, I'll be breaking down the final two games of Jimmy Butler's Conference Finals. Over the final two games of the Conference Finals, Jimmy Butler was incredible and bounced back in the biggest way. Jimmy started out the series very well over the first two games, averaging 35 points per game, 7.5 rebounds per game, 4 assists per game, 2.5 steals per game, and 1.5 blocks per game on a 72.3 true shooting percentage. However, after missing the second half of Game 3 and playing Game 4 and Game 5 hurt, in that stretch we saw him have the worst numbers I've seen from a player of his caliber, averaging just 9 points per game on a 31.72 shooting percentage. Then with his team down 3-2 in the series, he would have one of the best playoff performances I've ever seen, with 47 points, 9 rebounds, 8 assists, 4 steals, with only 1 turnover on a 69.4 true shooting percentage. And even though his team lose in Game 7, he still had 35 points and 9 rebounds on a 60.7 true shooting percentage, including 24 of those points in the first half. Jimmy Butler is one of the strongest players in basketball, and I think you can make a legit argument among true guard for Forwards, he is arguably the strongest of them all and it was very evident for a majority of the playoffs but it was definitely evident in the final two games of the conference finals as well he was able to out physical boston the entire series when he was fully healthy or playing at his best and it's not like boston wasn't throwing strong players at him they have really strong players in their own right but for the most part, Jimmy Butler was just stronger. He was able to get to the rim at will, and nobody could really match the physicality that he had in both the half court and transition settings. Jimmy Butler was also very good for the mid-range area as well. This is his bread and butter as a suitor. It's why I wouldn't call Jimmy Butler a bad suitor just because he doesn't take a lot of three-pointers and his three-point percentages are usually pretty low because he's a very deadly mid-range suitor and he's somebody that has proven that it's an efficient shot for him for the most part. I know the numbers were a bit down this season, but for most of his career, it's a very efficient shot for him. And also, he gets to the line a lot and is above average free throw suitor, uh, usually in that 85 to bordering on 90 range. So to me, it's just hard for me to call him a bad suitor just because he doesn't take three pointers, because there's so much more to suiting than just the ability to hit threes. However, in game six, Jimmy Butler was hitting his three pointers. He went four for eight from three in game six. Now, this wasn't a consistent tool for him in the series, and really hasn't been a consistent tool for him his entire career, and I will say for the most part, the Celtics were playing it with a, we'll live with him taking three strategy, I guess they probably should have taken it more seriously when he started to get into a rhythm, but it was very much a case of a big time player stepping up when his team needed him the most, rather than it was a sign of anything that really was consistent for him in the entire playoffs as a suitor. Jimmy Butler was incredible in the final two games of the playoffs for the Heat, there's no doubt about it. He was only on the bench for a little more than four minutes in those two games combined and played the entirety of game seven, which is why I kinda understand why he took that three at the end of the game because he was trying to go for the win and probably didn't want to play in overtime. In general, this was a great run for Jimmy regardless of the ending or the shot that he took at the end. He had the most single postseason 30 point games by a Heat player since LeBron James. He was the first player since Michael Jordan to have multiple 40 point four steal games in a single series. He scored the seventh most points in NBA history for a player facing elimination. He had the most 45 and 5 games in Heat history with three. And mind you, he did this in one postseason. It was just bizarre and fun to watch Jimmy in these playoffs because he was all-time great for many of those games, but 
there was no in between. It was either he was great or he was terrible. And it was bizarre and fun to watch. Jimmy Butler is one of the more interesting characters in basketball. He honestly reminds me a lot of a few JoJo characters, actually. They're going to connect the dots on your own for this one. I don't know if I can fully explain why he reminds me of them without this video being longer than the entirety of Stranger Things Season 4. However, from the early morning routines to Brazil in 2016, if you know, you know, to the legendary work ethic, to his playstyle not fully being embraced by modern basketball, but still remaining one of the best players in the league. Like every player in the NBA, and basically every player in the world, Jimmy is unique in his own way. And I think his playstyle, mentality, wiring, and off-court character, in a good way for the most part, is what makes Jimmy Butler, Jimmy Butler. But that's the end of this video if you made it to this point. Thank you so much. Again, if you haven't already, like, subscribe, do all those things. Be a big help to me. If you want to go check out other work on my channel, I have plenty of videos like that. And if you like this style of content, I'm wondering about you like my future content, so why not subscribe so you know whenever I upload a video. If you want to see more work of mine, there's a video I did about Nikola Jokic. That's the most recent video that I've made. And YouTube will be recommending another video over here. And you can click on the channel icon in the middle to subscribe if you haven't already. And then you enjoy my content. We're on that road to 10,000 subscribers by the end of the year. And I think we can reach that goal with the support you guys have been giving me. With that being said, have a nice day. And I'll see you guys in the next one.